So what's this video about? Okay, well, this is the Amiga 2000 and basically um, ages ago now I decided to take the clock battery off the board and I was really lucky that when I rescued this that the board, as you can see, it's in really good uh, neck. It didn't, it, it didn't corrode, it didn't rust, it was in really good uh, condition. It was a bit grimy, but you'd expect that with a bit of dust, you know. Well, anyway, um, it was really hard to get the board off uh, from the uh, case, and it was really hard. It's a two-man job, really, but I did it myself. And um, what it, what there is is there's these um, these like little um, they're like I don't know if you can see that really because of the uh, light. There you go. These things they're like. You have to basically squeeze the bits of plastic in and pull the board over over the like little peg and there's loads of these and they're dotted all over the place. So once you pull it over you've got to keep it you've got to keep the board pulled up and over. And you have to do that um, with all the other ones as well, so really it's a two man job. But because I was doing it myself, the board obviously kept going back down, so it was really awkward. But anyway, I managed to get the clock battery off and I didn't replace the uh, clock battery because one of the common problems with these uh, A2000s are, is the uh, clock battery. They often corrode onto the board and basically wreck the computer. But I decided even though I had a brand new clock battery, I thought, well, it has been sitting in the drawer for like years and end, even though it's new. And I'd rather not have the risk of putting a clock battery in just for it to one day corrode so I didn't pull it in and you don't really need the clock battery in there anyway so I just thought well why bother so I don't know if you can see this in here you probably won't be able to but just just there you can see the outline of where the battery was now there's two ways I could have got the battery off I could snip the legs off so basically you'd have just the metal spikes coming out which would have been the legs and you can just snip the um the battery off with a pair of uh, cutters or whatever or you can go underneath the board and heat the solder up and lift the battery off now doing that means that if i did decide to put a clock battery on again one day then i always could whereas if i just snipped the uh, legs off the battery from the legs then i probably won't be able to hit. So I just decided to heat the solder up from underneath and lift the battery off. That gives me the option one day, if I did want to add a clock battery, then I could, but I'm not going to. But something happened when I did this. Unfortunately, I broke one of the... I, I broke the second uh, joystick port. Now, the second joystick port isn't really important to the Amiga um, in terms of messing about with software um, because really you only need the mouse and the keyboard the keyboard uses its own like um, per, you know like plug and the mouse is uh, is it a D sub 9 I think that's what it is or a 9 D sub or however you say it and the second joystick port is obviously a 9 D sub but anyway um, yeah, I broke it. Basically, some of the metal, um, it's mainly the metal on, I don't know if you can see there, it's mainly the metal used in these um, these ports at the back. Some of the metal to keep the ports down, if you see that bit there. Some of that metal is used, it's, it's kind of like a soft metal, and especially some of the screws as well. I mean, if you look at this bit of metal here, it's that kind of metal, and it's it's the only metal that this computer that's gone soft um, that did kind of get affected by the elements um, or the or the circuitry and everything's fine but this kind of metal used for the screws the the bolts um, and some of the ports to keep the you know to keep the ports in place and whatnot the the, the pins that you 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 know you plug your um 
uh, joystick into they go through into the back and they go into these legs at the back and then the legs go down into the board and are soldered into the board but it's those legs that it has this kind of uh, soft metal now they would have been alright if the elements and all the moisture around them got to them but obviously it had they've gone soft now when I was trying to get the board off they must have been like uh, bent in and they just snapped off now I did try and think well maybe I can get a soldering iron and solder them back on but they are so small and I would have had to go through the legs at the front which were broke to the broken legs at the back and there was just no way I'm not that good at soldering and it's just so small so fiddly and annoying I wouldn't have been able to do it and I'm not a really great solderer anyway so I was like oh no I can't play games on my Amiga because the joyst the second joystick port's broke and when you're playing games on the A2000 they always say you need to use the second joystick port plug a joystick in the second joystick port but I couldn't because it was broke and I was buggered because I wanted to use I want to use this for more than software obviously so I did a Frankenstein fix <laughs> basically I this was about the time that Luke Moss did this video and he said about you using uh, what was it soldering flux and the flux helps the solder stick I was like oh this is great I can try and attempt this because I knew that the the bits on the board were so small that I probably won't be able to solder onto them so I thought I'll use this and I, I'll try this method so what I did was I went to Maplin's and don't laugh but I bought this which is a D sub 9 and see all these wires now all these wires uh, are soldered onto the where the legs were for the for the D sub on the board basically I just I said you know screw it I lift I, I broke all the other, other legs off and lifted it from the uh, board of course it was the only way to go about doing this to to get access to the little bits on the board that I had to solder to because there was no way of doing it really so for each pin there is a wire and for each and for each one it goes is being soldered onto the board for the corresponding uh, pin and I did that and I soldered the other end of the wires onto this so now I tested it out and it works it works perfectly but it means that what I have to do is I have to get um a joy pad and I have to thread the wire oh, I think I'll show you actually <laughs> I have to thread the wire there you can see some of the um, wires I have to thread the joy um, the joy pad wire through here and going along the uh, side here up to this um, the D sub 9 on here I don't want to move it too much to be honest and it does work, it works perfectly. I've basically saved um, the Amiga so I can play games, so I can use a second uh, joystick, or I can use just a joystick rather. And I've got a really good mouse. This mouse is absolutely brilliant. It's an old mouse. There ain't too many of these knocking about anymore because they. this one uses the uh, D sub 9. Uh, connection which is really hard to find now most people used some kind of um, adapter these days so I got one of those that's my best mouse and I've got it hooked up I'm never uh, disconnecting it because I don't want to have the same problem with the first joystick port and I do need to replace the uh, the keyboard but I'll deal with that at some point so so as I say, that's the uh, fix that I did. 